Welcome to Trinity To Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. My name is Pastor Martha Harrison, and I am so glad that you have chosen, chosen to jo join me this day. Our introduction to this day, the sixth week of Easter, goes like this. Jesus does not abandon his followers. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes to abide with his disciples in every generation. As Pentecost draws near, we are reminded that the risen Christ dwells in us as the Spirit of Truth. We receive this Spirit in baptism and pray that in our gathering around the Lord's table, the Spirit will transform us to be the body of the risen Christ in the world. So we gather this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your heart, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends our reading. Our gospel reading for this day comes from the 14th chapter of John. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my, com who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fear is a funny thing, isn't it? 
For several summers, a few years ago, our oldest son, as I probably, I know I've mentioned before, but our oldest son competed in drum corps. He would have shows and competitions all throughout the summer. And I remember one time when I was sitting in the stands at a football, on a football field getting ready to watch one of his shows. The stands were filling up and I couldn't help but overhear a conversation between a very frightened boy and his very frustrated dad. This boy was maybe 10 years old at the most. His father was trying to convince the son that the best seats at drum corps shows are up at the top because you get to see all the different configurations that happen on the field. The son, however, could care less about seeing anything at that point. All he was concerned about in that moment was that this railing that he was holding on to for dear life wasn't going to move. Apparently, the son, this young boy, was deathly afraid of heights. And there was no convincing him to move away from that spot. As the show started, I lost track of what was going on with the, the two of them, but a little while into the competition, I looked over and noticed that the boy had not moved. He was calmly and contently, as, as much as he could be content, holding on to the railing and not even looking at the show. His dad was sitting a few rows up, watching the competition and periodically checking in with his son, making sure he was okay and asking him if he wanted to move either up or down. And the answer was always, no, I'm fine. Fear. We are all afraid of something, aren't we? Some of us might have a fear of heights, a fear of small spaces, a fear of mice or more. Some of our fears might be farther reaching. We may be afraid of other things, situations that make us fearful, a loved one who is deteriorating, an uncertain future, our economic status, war, disease, being alone, or more. We may be fearful because we have no control over what's happening in our lives. Fear has a way of making its way into our lives and wreaking havoc keeping us from living this abundant life that God intends for us. Our gospel lesson this week is a section of Jesus' final instructions to his disciple. We are back to his last night, the night he was arrested. So these men and Jesus are gathered together to celebrate the Passover. And I imagine that emotions were high excitement and confusion and wonder and maybe even fear. You see, Jesus had been doing and saying odd things all throughout his ministry, but the things he was saying that evening very clearly parted, pointed to his departure. He would be leaving them. I imagine that their minds were racing, wondering what they would do now. Wondering where Jesus was going and why they couldn't go with him. Fear of the unknown. Fear of being alone. Fear of facing the future without Jesus guiding them. Jesus' words to the disciples are, are comforting, but yet they're confusing. First, he tells them, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. An advocate to be with you forever. You see, Jesus is telling them that they won't be alone. They will have an advocate. Someone who will lead them and guide them, empower them, and more. The promise of not having to go alone is encouraging. But I imagine that these disciples were wondering how this advocate... How this advocate will live in them. Jesus continues to reassure his disciples again that he will not leave them alone. He will not orphan them. When they can no longer see him, they will be in him, 
and he will be in them. And that is good news. Confusing or not, it is good news. But can't you just picture the faces of these disciples as Jesus is speaking? Some of them were probably confused. They didn't quite get what what Jesus was talking about, how he would be leaving, how he would send an advocate, and how he would be in them. It wasn't really clear and straightforward talk. But, you know, that really wasn't unusual from Jesus. But in the days ahead, I imagine that these disciples would more than likely cling to these words, waiting for the promised advocate, waiting for the time when they wouldn't feel so alone and lost. Are these somewhat confusing and comforting words of Jesus for us as well? Do we too receive the promise that we will never be alone or orphaned? that we have an advocate, that we are one with Jesus. Have you ever felt alone, afraid, maybe even lost? The summer before my sixth grade year, we moved to the town where my mom grew up and where my parent, grandparents were still living. I can say I wasn't all that thrilled as an incoming sixth grader to be starting a new school. And in all honesty, I was really afraid. My grandparents lived about a half a block from the school, so on that first morning I started walking to school. I was going to do this on my own. I went part of the way and I actually turned back. I was so scared. I could see the kids on the playground and I and I was just really scared to meet them. I figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal to wait another day, right? Well, I began walking a second time to school and I and I turned back again because it was at that point that I thought, "Eh, I don't really need any more schooling, do I?" It would be okay, wouldn't it, with my fifth grade education? Well, finally, I did make it to the playground. And as I walked through that playground to the school building, I felt very alone. I didn't know anyone, and no one really went out of their way to talk to me. So I continued to just look forward, and I continued to walk. I sat down outside of the front door waiting for the time when we could go into the building. All of a sudden, I heard a friendly voice sitting next to me say, Hi, are you new? My name's Stacy. I was so relieved to have someone who wanted to talk to me. We started talking and we started laughing. And then Stacy told me that she would show me around and, and introduce me to people. Stacy quickly became a good friend that year who was there for when I needed her. She took me under her wing and she guided me. I was no longer alone. I had an advocate in the midst of this scary situation. So yes, there are going to be times in our journey of faith that we are going to just be just as confused and frightened as I imagine the disciples were. We may wonder where God is. We may wonder how we're going to continue on our own. We may wonder why we feel so alone. Yet we too have been given an advocate. We have been given the Holy Spirit to live in us, to guide us, to comfort us, to empower us, and more. We are not alone. The Holy Spirit also guides us to other people who are not alone and we can be supportive to one another. This Holy Spirit doesn't necessarily take away our fears or our worries, but strengthens us for the journey through the things that can bring us down. We can rest in the fact that the Holy Spirit is always with us, being our advocate. The Holy Spirit is God living in us. 
So it would be great if I could stand up here today and wave a magic wand and make all our fears and hardships disappear. But I can't. Fear and hardship are just a part of this world that we live in. Yet when we know that we don't face these obstacles alone, we can continue to walk this journey on which God has placed us. We can give in to our fears, our feelings of being alone, the tough times we face, and we can live life in fear, afraid to step out in faith to share the love of God with others. Or we can lean on the Holy Spirit in all that we do, knowing that we are not alone, knowing that it is God who is in charge, knowing that God is walking with us and guiding us. We can lean on the Holy Spirit and live into this abundant life and full life of faith that God desires for each and every one of us. It is a gift that we too have been given an advocate. That we are loved by a love that never leaves us, even in the darkest of our moments. Thanks be to God. We gather now for a time of prayer where we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that you have given us an advocate, that you have placed the Holy Spirit in our life to guide us, to walk with us, but also to empower us to live in community with one another so that we do not walk this journey alone. Empower each of us to show your love to someone who desperately needs to desperately needs to know about you. Oh God, we give you thanks for our community. We give you thanks for all the ministries that work together to serve the needy in our town, for the United Way, for ministry on the margin, for the Dream Center and more. Bless their ministries. Be with those who work tirelessly to help the homeless and the poor. Grant them rest and give them direction in their ministry. You, O oh God, know that there are many in our community and in our lives who are struggling in mind, body, or spirit. Send your healing presence to be with them, O oh God. We pray especially today for Annette and Jan, Kathy, Mardell, and Linda. James, Wilbur, Ellen, Morgan, and Ken, Melissa, Jan, and Jim. Bless them, heal them, and bring rest to their caregivers. We place all these prayers at your feet, O God, confident that you hear them and you answer them. We pray them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for making the choice to join with me in worship this day. Just a few announcements for you. There's lots of things coming up, but one thing that's really important that's coming up in the life of our church is that there will be a special congregational meeting on May 21st, uh, Sunday, May 21st at 9.35. So that's next Sunday, 9.35 between the two services. And what this meeting is about is about we're voting on our fire detection system. Our uh, fire detection alarm system task force has been working tirelessly to get more information so that we have the full picture of what's going on. A lot of those documents that you need to see, if not all, are on our website, trinitybismarck.com, and you can check those out. If you are someone who doesn't want to come in person to the meeting, but you want your voice to be heard or you want your vote to be counted, please contact the office and you can get um, a form to fill out to be able to vote via Zoom. 
uh, contact Clarissa and she can help you out with that. Thank you so much uh, for continuing to support the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church, whether it's um, through your, your time or your talent or your treasure. We give you thanks for your offering because that just that allows our ministries to continue. And there are a lot of new things that are happening, whether it'll be as we move forward into the summer. Uh, we're just grateful for your ongoing generosity. If you would like to mail in uh, your offering in a minute, the slide will pop up with the address for Trinity Lutheran. You can just mail that in. If you'd like to figure out a way to give online, uh, you can contact Heather in the office and she'll be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, for other announcements, you can find them on our website or our Facebook page. And uh, I just encourage you to go there or to go to our YouTube channel and to check out some of our fun videos that we have. But we uh, conclude our service today with a blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks again for joining me for worship. We'll see you next time.